Hello there. What's going on? What's going on everyone? I'm Jamil, the Arab Mamba here, and I'm back at you with another video. And today's video is going to be a movie review and I am so, so, so excited to give this movie review. For those of you who don't know, Quentin Tarantino is my favorite movie director of all time. His style of movies is, is consistent and prevalent and even though it's consistent, it's always unique every single time. He never ceases to amaze me. He never ceases to, to draw me into his movies. And this movie was no other. The movie in question today is Django Unchained. This was a movie that came out when I was young. I knew I wouldn't understand it when I was young. And now that I'm older, I figured why not watch it now to get a full grasp of it. And boy, oh boy, I am so happy I did. Let's just, let's just start right into it. I have a lot to say. Let's start with number one, the cinematography. The cinematography in this movie was amazing. It's not the best I've ever seen, but it's definitely amazing for the time that it came out in. It's still remarkable because I don't think it's, it's because it's honestly pretty hard to get to the level of Moonlight. The way they had the camera angles that, it wasn't necessarily a smooth transition. It was more like a chop, 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 chop. But the way they positioned it allowed for more effect. And I just, I thoroughly enjoyed the cinematography. It really felt like, I was in the movie. Number two, the acting. I mean, Jamie Foxx, he he blew it out of the water. He was amazing. He was able to play this slave who was freed, who was all of a sudden given this position of power. And then he's put in this position of power and he low-key like abuses his power a little, but it ends up, you know, working for the better. Then we have Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, it's it's Leo. This this man never ceases to amaze. I don't even need to speak anything more about Leonardo DiCaprio. If you had a list of actors of all time, Leonardo DiCaprio is at the top of that list. And if Leonardo DiCaprio is not in your top three of all time, then your list is objectively wrong. I don't want to hear it. Hey, me. I'm currently editing the video and I realized I forgot to mention Kerry Washington. I needed to mention her. Kerry Washington played a phenomenal role. She was the stereotypical damsel in distress in the typical cowboy movie, but she took the role to the next level. Hats off to her. That was an amazing performance. It was genuinely something I'll never forget. Next, we have the plot. The plot was unique. It was very Tarantino-like. It was something that kept me involved and it wasn't static. It just kept going, it kept progressing. There was never a single stale part of the movie. Keep in mind, this movie was over two hours long. It was almost three hours long. And there was never a single point in the movie where I was like, oh my God, when is this thing gonna be over? No, like this was best in class. Uh, next, we have the character growth. In every single movie, you need your static characters and your dynamic characters. Um, the only dynamic characters that I saw in this movie were Django and Brunhilda. I think that's how you say her name. The way they grew throughout the entire movie, I think was really, really notable, especially Django and how he learned things as a slave that previously didn't know things. He starts off as a slave who at that time was seen as the lowest in society. And he ends off as this like superhero who just rules the world and he can do anything and nobody can stop him. Next, we have the themes. What really makes this movie is the theme of slavery. Quentin Tarantino tried to make a very science fiction, 1960s, 1970s cowboy film, but he also introduced this really real idea that the effects of slavery back then and how slavery affects black people and how they think and how they interact with each other uh, it's not something that you can catch with the naked eye, but when you really watch the movie and think deeply about the characters and what's happening, you really start to appreciate the signs that Quentin Tarantino showed throughout the movie. It was almost like a, a mini history lesson. Uh, the storytelling, I felt like I was an eight-year-old and my mom was reading me like a bedtime story and I'm just intrigued the entire time. That was how the storytelling was. It was beautiful. Um, there was not necessarily a complete plot twist, but there was always something that was added about every five minutes of the movie that just collectively brings everything together towards the end. Which brings me to the ending. The, this movie quite literally brought everything full circle. They did not leave a single page unturned. Everything that a character said in the beginning was brought full circle in the end. 
Quentin Tarantino tends to do this where he foreshadows the ending in the middle slash first one third of the movie. And to make it even more obvious for the viewer, Django at the end of the movie actually repeats lines that he said earlier in the movie to be like, oh, hey, remember I said this? Now look what happened right now. I did that. It was awesome, truly a work of art. Everything that you wanted to happen happened but not in the way you expected it to, which is the perfect ending to a movie. That is what makes a good movie a good movie. But this movie was more than just a good movie. It was phenomenal. It was one for the ages. It is my favorite movie. And I've been reviewing movies for years and I am about to do something that I never did. This movie gets, drum roll please, a seven out of seven, and it deserved it. There was nothing that I didn't like. There was nothing where I finished the movie and I felt like, oh man, I really wish this would have happened. Oh man, I really didn't think you did this well. Oh, I really think they were lacking in this part. No, like this movie killed it in all categories and it fully deserved the seven out of seven. Tarantino, this is his best movie. Yes, this movie is better than Pulp Fiction. Must watch. That's the end of the video. Go watch it. Oh, by the way, hold on. I got the speaker. I don't know, I just wanna show you guys. Maybe I should do like a tech review. Should I make this like a tech channel? I bought this, it was on sale on Amazon for like 30 bucks, the JBL Go 2 speaker. It works really, really well. It's also waterproof, really portable, really loud, really crisp. No complaints, definitely worth the price. I think it's worth more than what I paid for if I'm being quite honest. Um, but yeah, vlog coming out soon. Stay tuned for that. See ya.